Dr. Melvin, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you, board chair and board members. I um, am here from a director from the last meeting just to talk a little bit about um, kind of going forward as our project scope again, 2022, we did a market analysis. We addressed some of the classification changes. We also recalibrated part of the grid and then now we're in 2023, but we are gonna start doing some of the ongoing maintenance for those grades 87 through 91 um, and HHS. Um, looking at that market analysis, equity issues, um, and other things that we can help with as far as ongoing maintenance. And then in 2024, the goal would be um, potentially to move out of merit. So in 2023, from the last time, we talked about addressing compression, creating more grades, trying to get one pay grid, so moving HHS over, addressing those grades 87 to 91. We didn't touch those last time. Review that entry level pay and review targeted positions. So at the last meeting, um, we talked a lot about the benchmark. We agreed to keep it for arbitration. Um, we talked about recalibrating the pay grid to add more grades to reduce compression between a, a direct report and the supervisor, um, setting a pay philosophy, moving HHS into one grid, addressing those grades 87 through 91, and then implementation. We didn't really finalize that, so that's something we can still talk about. But from the last meeting, um, the board direction was to um, look at the current pay grid to the market. And if you took the first two steps off added to look at where you could slot in additional grades, um, and looking at setting up a pay philosophy of the 90th percentile of your benchmark. Does that sound familiar? Um, mostly, I, I, I don't know if the board reached a consensus about the 90th percentile. Um, and I don't know if other people believe we reached that consensus or if that was just one option that we talked about. That was an idea, but uh, yep. I did not necessarily think that that, that was a consensus. Had, that we right. Had. It was direction for me to kind of go forward and say, if you did this, where would it put you to the yes. market? Yes. So that you guys, because you guys said, well, we don't know where exactly we want to be. It would be easier to edit an option. OK, so, so yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah, so. Correct. So um, this is kind of small, I apologize for that. But what, what we did is we did the market analysis. We're looking at all the positions, but particularly what we did in this one is we looked at the um, your detention deputy. If you look at your appraiser trainer, trainee, your senior engineer tech, highway equipment operator, public health nurse. Um, the reasons for those positions in particular, were those were the ones we talked about last time that are the hardest to recruit for, we're having issues with retention. So I just wanted to kind of show where that was um, to the market and kind of explain maybe why we are where we're at. So I started with a smaller group versus doing the whole big group so we could kind of see what that would look like. I'm just going to increase this just a sec. There it is. Um, but what it does is when you look at the whole market in this group, so leaving everything just to market average, your minimums are at 95% of market average. The maximums are at 107 of market average maximum. And the actual rate is at 95%. So the min is where they could come in. The max is their maximum potential. Actual is if we looked at where they're being paid currently today. So that's that's where that looks. If we looked at that 90th percentile, because I just wanted to explain the difference and kind of start that conversation, is it shows that you're at the 87th percent of the 90th, 90th percentile of the mins, 94 of the max, and 84% of the actual pay. So the difference between looking at the whole market is you just average it out and you're kind of right in the middle. When you say we're going to be in the 90th percentile, you start kind of ranking it, basically saying we would like to be in the top four. So when we look at that, it definitely shows kind of where you are to that. Um, in the pink, anything we always say competitively, if you're within 5%, you're competitive. Um, nine is somewhat, and then anything in the pink we would say is something that we should look at. Is it the position or why is it that low to the market? 
And so for the percentile, you can see that your mins are low in both of them. Part of that is, is you have a large wage range, so your min and your max is large. Um, but the issue there is if you have a min that is, in this case, I would say very low to the market, and you only start in there, that's where you're going to have issues getting people in the door. Um, so we kind of start off slow. We have a maximum that is maybe competitive or somewhat, but it takes them a while to get there and they get frustrated, leave or whatever may be the case. But that minimum is a place I think that this really highlights. Are there questions with this so far? Well, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding it yeah. correctly, which I think I am. And um, so I think that this graph that was from before I was here that compares uh, Goodyear County. I think that's um, um, kind of where we are. And I think this is the other counties that are in the benchmark group. Is that right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Tough for, uh, it's something that yeah, she produced it, but yeah, produced a lot of material. All right. And, and so when you say the 90th percentile, do you mean if we take the 11 counties yeah. and, and then that we look at what the, um how, when you say the 90th percentile do you how, how do you calculate that is what i'm really asking so what allows you to do what excel does allows you to do a formula based on that it basically allows you to rank them so the 90th percent of your market basically puts you in kind of that top three i mean if you looked at the average but there's only 11 counties so wouldn't it put us within the top one no, it, it sets it to a percentile. It doesn't look specifically at ranking one, two, three. But if there's a formula that says we want to be in the 90th percentile, same as if we wanted to be the market average. So it says if this is the number, the 90th percentile would be X. It just helps you get to there. If you looked at it ranking wise, it would put you at about the third. I mean, I it could show you you're going to have Olmstead is going to be the top one, right? Right. And then generally, right. So now that may fluctuate sometimes depending upon position or mm -hmm. um, whatever, but that's how the calculation. So the 90th percentile, if we added up all of the um, uh, maxes, and then would you then say whatever is 90% of of dividing that out? I mean, I, I don't understand the calculation that the you- The percentile ranks you basically. I mean, if you were to say the market average is a 50th percentile, it's right. Right, the right. I understand So that. it starts to build it up higher than that to say we need to be above that. Um, the 90th is just a number you set in and it, the Excel formula allows you to calculate that. But if you think about it, literally, it basically ranks you and says, we would like to be in that top quartile. If you said 80th, it would go slightly down but Olmstead and Rice would probably still be right above you. So the part I'm having a hard time understanding is the 90th percentile it normally would mean that you'd be in the top 10%. And I think you're saying, no, you're in the top quartile if there's 11 counties. So that's what I'm having a hard time understanding. It's a top, per, it's would be the top 10 percentile of your overall. If per you had- you Which know, is 11 counties. Percentile isn't necessarily percentage. Because if you were 90th percent, 90 percent of the market, like you, let's just say on the actual year, 95 percent of market average, that's different than being in the 95th percentile. Taking the percentile is just another way of calculating. I mean, you could say we don't want to be there. We want to be 10 or 15 percent above market, which would be 110, 115 percent above that first group. The percentile just allows you to calculate it to say we want to rank ourselves. We'd like to be up in that top. We think that we're better than the average. Mm -hmm. So you could change it. You could put 85th percentile and it would do it. What it does for us is it allows us to see what counties are your top two or three or whatever that may look like. And then it just allows us to start calibrating the pay grid at that. Because again, we're not going to get all of the jobs right in there, mm -hmm. but we start calibrating it so that we can say our pay philosophy is we want to be in the 90th percentile. I have a question. So on the full market averages, we're in okay shape, but all of a sudden the next columns were not. Well, so here's how to look at that. That's mm -hmm. a great question. So then if you looked at it from a 
a purely statistical um, thing. I would say if you're within 5%, then you're okay. So that 95 is okay. 107 means you're above. That's not the market right now though. So the textile definition of market average isn't going to be competitive enough. This says where you are to just that market average. So if you have 11 counties, you're basically saying five are gonna be above, right. five are gonna be below you. And what we're hearing, and I would say it also shows on some of these is that's not competitive enough. You're not getting people in the door. They're not staying. And you have this recruitment and retention issue. So. You can calibrate it however you want. You mm -hmm. can say, based on the market where we are, we're just going to add 10% and we're going to be at 117% of max. That would put us at 105 of the market average. Is that competitive enough? That would be a way to look at it. We just looked at it as a 90th percentile so that you're still using all your 11. You're just saying you want it to be higher up mm -hmm. than the market near the 50th percentile. No, I understand that. I understand that, but I, it just seems to me that then all that would be ahead of us would be Olmstead. No, and that's where I'm. It's uh, not because if mm -hmm. I mean we can go into maybe afterwards you yeah. can explain it to me. Yep. Mm -hmm. And again, it's averaging out the market, and then it's putting you in that percentile. So it's including everyone in the average. No, I understand and it that. Ranks you to say this is where you need to be. You are not going to be above Olmstead. No, not above. They would be above us, but I think we'd be above everybody else. Right, so you would be third. So you'd have Rice and Olmstead would probably be higher. Some cases it might differ depending upon a position. I understand that. But what I'm not understanding is why that wouldn't be the 80th percentile if there's two counties above us and there's only 11 counties. And you could calibrate it at the 80th percentile. It doesn't just literally rank them. It takes that full no, I understand average that. I understand. and does a percent of, percentile of that. So it I doesn't see. say, you know, if we had 100, then we would be the top. So if Olmstead pays two hundred thousand dollars. Everybody else pays one hundred thousand dollars. Then what would the number be? It wouldn't be two hundred thousand no. dollars, but it wouldn't be much above a hundred thousand dollars because they're all they're the same. Well, that's a lot lower. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because your market average in that case this may be one hundred and ten thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. So it would be slightly above that because market average would be in that fiftieth percentile. So the, in that case, 110,000 would be the 50th percentile, roughly. I mean, yep. and so the 90th percentile in that average, uh, that's where I'm not understanding what the calculation is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Let's back to, like I said, so all I can think of the Iowa basics and everything well, was a percentile. But, but I should be able to understand. Biology, not enough should statistics be able to understand the uh, calculation if I'm accepting That's it. That's why they use a formula, I think. <laughs> it's, it is not easy. It is not easy to understand this. Right. I totally get not, that. So another way to think about it then is if you don't want to look at the percentile or it doesn't make sense, um, you know, because the formula allows you to do all that in Excel, mm -hmm. you could say, based on this, we need to be above 107% of maximum rate, above 95%. Do you know what I mean? Because well, above 100% of the mean maximum rate, is that what you're saying? The average. So, so the, the market mean. average, if you were at the market average, you'd be 100%, 100%. So you're low on the minimums. Yes, you're I understand that. On the max and you're low on the actual pay. So if you don't want to look at the percentiles, then I would say, fine, <laughs> we need to then take, where do you want to be to the market average? Sure, no, I understand that. And it's not that I object to the percentile, I just want to understand it. It's hard, it, it yeah. is. It's, so that, that's, it's that's not It's statistical analysis. And that, unless, I have another question about this um, question, because isn't the actuals of each of these numbers really determined by how many years the individual has been in that? That's right, that's why so, I put them in there. So it's not, particularly relevant to the grid because somebody who's only been there for a year, their actual is going to be low. And somebody who's been there for 12 years, their actual is going to be Not necessarily, high. because if you hired me at step eight, that's going to be my actual. So okay. that way it doesn't necessarily, I mean, in an ideal world, yes. Mm -hmm. if, if it was an ideal world, I wouldn't be here because mm -hmm. everything would make sense. We would start at one, we would end at 12, people would be happy, but it doesn't. <laughs> so. I always say I like 
the min and the max because that tells me we have a recruitment mm -hmm. or a retention issue. The actual, though, I think is interesting in this case because, you know, like if you look at the um, the appraiser trainee, so that's just low all right across the board. But if you look at the at ADC administrator, its max is ten percent above the market, but its actual right now is where that person is engaged compared mm -hmm. to where other colleagues are. That's where it is. And if I were in that position, that's what I would be looking at. Why are all of my colleagues in other counties making more than me? But that's not telling us how long the employees have been in the other counties. Exactly. Yeah. But as an employee who comes in, I don't want to start at step one because mm -hmm. I've been, I have experience or whatever. You know what I mean? So that's where people, that. I think, uh, and then I do kind of believe the appraiser trainee, they'd never make it to step 12 because they aren't going to stay. Well, hopefully no, they're another county. Well, but they won't be a trainee either. I mean, if you're 77%. No, I understand person. that. I understand that that's low. I'm just suggesting that the max for that particular one, a trainee. Right. They would hopefully, if in an ideal world, they mm -hmm. got their training and stayed here, they would go to the next level right, in right, this grade. Right. But unfortunately, they're saying, no, I'm going to go here. Right. I understand. Thanks that. for the training. Yeah. Yeah, so I understand that the uh, minimum of that one is very critical. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. And if you just let me just go a couple more slides, I, I think I can show it visually. Maybe that would help more mm -hmm. and explain really what the issue is. And we can talk about pay loss because we haven't decided that. Mm -hmm. Percentile maybe is just we're not there. Some entities, that's how they want to be. Mm -hmm. um, it might just be we need to be at 115, 120 percent of that. And then I can go back and see where that calibrates. Do you know what I mean? This is why we're having this discussion yeah. to make sure you all are comfortable with it. We can create a grid. I think by doing the cutting of the steps and adding of the grades, we have a good grade a grid built. Mm -hmm. Now we just have to calibrate it at what the board would say this makes sense to us. If the percentiles don't, we'll throw that out and we'll work with the market average or you said median, if that's what you want. No, I'm not saying so, that. I just want to understand the number. Entities do all different things. So before you move on, I just want to say something to what Tessa was talking about when we losing people in that first five years. That's where that, that actuals piece is very important because with the actuals is behind, they're actually not ever getting to the middle. Right. 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 We lose them before they get there. Right. But the lower end of the that's, scale, that's is, gotta move. it's got to move. I understand and I think that. You just had a public uh, operator that was posted heavy equipment operator and you post for the first two steps is that correct and facebook comment was us extremely low it is and i mean you can see here it is low to the market your mins are going to be lower than the market average right and it takes them longer so they're not going to even come in the door do you know what i mean that's why you're having positions that are open or if they do they'll stay and say oh the grass is greener over there i'm going to move over to that yeah. only because I can get and that was visit. posted this week and the first three comments were about our pay mm -hmm. on, on Facebook. So in this, I, I kind of did the same thing, but I um, just looked at that. I think that what's happening here and I don't think we can we can we can figure out how we get to the end result. Mm -hmm. it's Oliver, but I think the big thing here is your minimum rates are low so you're having a hard time bringing people in or you're having to start them at step five which isn't what the system was intended to do um they're getting frustrated they can't wait and they leave the actuals are low too because if you are starting them at one or two or three it's going to be lower to the market now i say with the actual you've take that with the grain of salt because if i'm in a position that all of the other benchmark counties has someone that's been there 20 years mm -hmm and I just started, then my actual is going to be low. Mm -hmm. But I think it does tell a story when you have some positions that are 10, you know, 15% below that. You don't want that either because you want them to be able to grow and to feel that, you know, they're valued. So I think here, the other thing is, is that compression, when you look at the lieutenant, it's even lower to the market than your detention deputy, um, so then you have that compression issue, which we already have and we know it. But then it's like because of it, it's not only creating the internal issue, but it becomes even lower to the market. So unfortunately, it just kind of keeps snowballing how your system is currently designed and working. And 
it's not like you're the only county facing this. Everyone is facing. We just had this conversation. It's just that the market is very crazy right now because there is such a labor shortage. Mm -hmm. And um, we just want to talk about how do we fix what we have? How do we reward people? And then how can you get people in the door to stay? Because you don't want to be a training ground um, and pay a lot of money and then see people leave. Mm -hmm. That's expensive. I understand that. So if you look at just the, the, the green lines on here are good use max and the actual pay and the blue on this would be the 90th percentile. So you can see it averages out that. It's not saying that again, but I think it shows a, a nice story that where you start out and kind of where you peak and dip um, are some of those more troubled positions that we knew about, like the detention deputy nurse. Um, Again, those are some of the areas you guys, you know, said we have issues here. Well, the data says, yeah, yeah. you do. I mean, it includes that. So, um, I'm Todd's got a yep. question. So, can we just, when we do the evaluations, so is that possible to move them upgrades then, rather than change the entire system, or is that, you know, and I think we started that two or yeah. three years ago, and we said. Why can't we just raise this one? But we have the whole system to look at. Right. So if yeah. you just said in here, I mean, the issue here is you have a detention deputy, which is probably here in the system, and a nurse that is here. They're both low, so you have to fix them both. If I just move the nurse up and said, I'm just going to pay you, pay equity says, why are those points so high when, you know, how are you going to account for that? Because pay equity wants it to be internally equity to say that if a public health nurse, let's say, is 400 points, it should be paid the same as other 400 point positions. And if you say we're just going to raise it two grades, we'll get it right where we want it to the market. But then another position is 400 points, two grades lower. Pay equity says that's not fair. If it's a female who's in the lower. Yeah. But if there was another female position, like a public health nurse was up there, and let's say it, I don't, I can't think of a position right now that's at 400 points, but another female, you've now paid, un, or, you know, paid one higher and one lower, and that's going to say it's not following what you're supposed to be doing. So unfortunately, you can't. You can do some market adjustments, some, but pay equity wants everything to be aligned. And in this case, I would say your whole grid needs to shift because you have some of those lower entry positions and they're low to the market. And so are some of the higher ones. So you- so The other counties pay their deputies higher, their detention deputies higher. They've just got a higher pay grid on everything also. But yep. that doesn't show that in here though. Well, I mean, it, I'm just gonna walk over here. I understand. I mean, it kind of does because if this is your detention deputy here, where you're starting in here, this is where the other benchmarks are paying. So they are paying them higher. So their pay grid is different. And this follows, I mean, if you look at how it follows, you're just lower kind of all over. And part of it is, is the min and the max, your range is so wide. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting it low and saying, we can only hire at step one or two, you're at a really disadvantage right away. Um, so it does, I mean, show that other counties are paying higher. That would visually show this, you right. know. And we minimum. just did this last year, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So in uh, every year, we're just going to be that far behind all the time? Don't have the answer to <laughs> what other counties are doing. I mean, unfortunately, you're in a situation that, you know, when we fixed it, we thought we were putting it to be more competitive, but we didn't look at the whole grid. We did part of the grid, and then we only looked at a couple of classifications. I can't comment on classifications because I wasn't here to do them all. That's why we're doing this ongoing maintenance to mm -hmm. look at it more frequently so you don't get behind and make sure you're still maintaining pay equity. I mean, I would say if you could say go back three years to be 100%, 107% of mark, that's great. That's not competitive enough right now in this labor market. When we looked at it three years ago, we didn't, when when Tessa brought in and said, hey, where do you want to be to the market? We never said we wanted to be at 90, 80, 70, 60. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't do, we didn't fully get to where we probably should have. Mm -hmm. 
But I think your question is, well, if they're paying the deputy detention deputies more, aren't they paying everybody? More? I think that's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And when it, you look at the chart, it doesn't seem no, the doesn't. question we started with way back then that it just doesn't seem like we're that low across the board with everybody when you show that some are at men's and some are at max. So I'm assuming that's but, the same question you've had, but the same question we had when we did all this other stuff that we said low. But part of the issue is our range is we start people out too low. That is part of the issue. And, and we got to remember what we're comparing to, too, because we don't really look like what we're comparing to. Uh -huh. I mean, quite frankly, you and I, we talked to Freeburn County. Freeburn County says we don't have a problem hiring people. Yeah. What does that what does that tell you about what they can pay? Yeah, they don't. They aren't in the market. That's local. Mm -hmm. That's Freeborn County. That's not good. You county. Mm -hmm. If we're going to compare and use Freeborn County, probably should just throw them out because they probably aren't anything like us. Mm -hmm. Their market, their access to to workers is totally different than what we're struggling with. So there's some issues with the benchmarks we change. Yeah. So so when we say we want to be in the 90th percentile, who does that get us to? Gets us to Olmsted County, which is is a more metro, I will say more metro, and Rice County, which is competing against everything north of them, mm -hmm. just like we're competing against everything north of us and Olmsted County. Mm -hmm. So it is local. I'm sure you go to Houston County, they probably don't have, they may have problems, but it's probably because they don't have people, mm -hmm. but um, not the same kind of pay pressure that we're seeing in Goodyear County. So it is, that's why I think you have to narrow it down to be really closer to like us if you're ever going to be in a competitive range. And that's what that percentile does. That's exactly what percentile does. And I, I think that, that I think as a board, we've agreed that the, the uh, beginning numbers are too low. And I think we've agreed that there's an issue with needing to pay the supervisors. So it's um, really worth it to them. I think those are the two biggest issues that we've and, had. And I said it to Scott yesterday, to me, the number in the top left corner of a pay grid is the most important number because from there's this direction is what drives everything else. Mm -hmm. If you start too low in the right. in the no, upper left that. corner, I everything that. else is out of whack. And we need to get, we need to make sure that upper left corner, mm -hmm. we're satisfied with that number. To drive the rest of it, I and you know there's questions just, along the way, but you got to start. You got to start up there. Just so everybody knows, what that top left number is um, countywide is seventeen dollars and eighteen cents. Yeah. So, sorry to derail you. But I mean, this is why we're having this conversation. It, you guys have to be comfortable at what you're doing. But I mean, to your point, even what what we did last year seemed like, well, that's a big change. The market, I mean, you can work in retail entry level positions to 20 to 24 bucks an hour now. That wasn't the case. They're having it, you know what I mean? So now you never had to really deal with that. It was something you really didn't have to worry about. Now you do. Um, so that 17, like Scott said, that's an issue because I can go, you know what I mean? So now you have more competitors than just the county positions. Holders pays $18 an hour. Yeah. So yeah, it, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get that part. This just shows them in the minutes. Um, so I mean, again, your market spread is fifty-five percent. The average market is thirty-eight. Homestead is over fifty percent from their min to max. They pay different. They have performance pay, so they just pay different than you do. Um, but uh, I mean, just looking at this, you know, due to your wage range, that's why you're not hiring at step one mm -hmm. or two, um, because you're lower and that's the lowest part of the piece. So getting those people in, or if you do, it's causing compression or leapfrogging with people that are currently in. Um, you have 12 steps to get to your maximum pay. Benchmarks can range from eight to 10 steps if you want to keep it that way. I think that's why we said what we're going to do is take those two off and add. And that really, um, 
it, it does, I, I think, help you. And I can show you that what it would look like increasing the number of grades kind of in there. So before in your old system, you have grades 76 to 91, which is about 15. We've created 23 now. So what helps there now is you have when we weave in health and human services, there's a lot more places for them to go. So we don't create more compression. We can undo some of the compression issues, which you were talking about. And part of that was, is you just had large spreads between some. So we were just able to slide some in there. We adjusted the top. Um, and I think to what Scott said, if, you know, it is proposed, so this is not anything that the board has approved, but I mean, looking at grade one, no one is in there currently, but moving that from 17 to 1825, um, usually you kind of keep one or two grades for part-time positions or it's just for future use. You never want to kind of butt your way to the top. But moving that 19, 16, 20, 20, that's huge because that's a more oh, go ahead. We do have people in HHS that are below that. Oh, I know. I but I I'm just saying yeah. that's for them, that's gonna be a big bump. I right, already right. looked at that in the math. They're the ones mm -hmm. that are going to increase. But they might slot in at a grade two. That's what I'm saying. It's got okay. when we create it. Because again, this is the grid. So we've tried to we've we've done a couple of things. We this is your pay grid. So what is it based off of? It's based off of your job descriptions. It's based off of market analysis. Where do you want to competitively be? But then it has internal equity. So those three things we have to look at. So just because I have a grade one here doesn't mean anyone will be there. And just because I have this kind of cut off doesn't mean anyone will be there. Those are all pay equity points. That's where we can have more discussion once we calibrate it somewhere where you're comfortable with and we can start slotting jobs in. And showing you the cost because mm -hmm. the cost you may say whoa we are not ready for that mm -hmm. so maybe year one we have to do something year two it looks something different but we're just having this conversation to say this is what it would look like and you can see i mean just for health and human services this is huge for them because they would get a bump they would be paid very competitive to the market you have to spot them in but you also have to do it by pay equity so whatever mm -hmm. points those come in at if it equals a county job, that has to equal each other. We can't have two pay goods. That's our goal is to have one. Right. Going, have, go ahead. I have two questions. On the on the grades, on the steps, I can see where it's 4%, 4%, 4% very consistently. On the grades, I don't think it's the same percentage yeah. between each grade. And tell me your thinking on that. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. So textbook would say you should have 10% between like the grades if we were living in an ideal world. Mm -hmm. We try to recalibrate your grid to the market. So we're trying to match where you where you want to be to the market. So they will fluctuate between I think five and seven percent on. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me. Yep. And the reason you do that is hey, that's how the market pays. So that, if, that percent I understood. So, so uh, but that's a good point. I mean, so you move across this way, but you can move this way mm -hmm. um, a little bit different. We try to match this matches how the market is this is how you want to pay your right. employees and so we, you could say we want to do five percent five percent five percent five percent or two 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 this still would match how the and we could do five percent in ten steps or whatever it is that we yeah, want you can do, do however yeah. some will start out and we talked about this the last time mm -hmm. you can start out heavy if you want to reward those coming in say five 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 make it lower three 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 if you uh -huh. want to reward i see i see Current employees, you say three, 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 five, five, five. Right. So again, this is we kind of told you where you are to the market, and the market average. Maybe that's where we start, but you get to influence the market of how yes, you want to pay now. This is only one thing to help guide that direction. If you feel comfortable with twenty-three grades, yes, we've accomplished the compression issue. Great. If you're comfortable, kind of how we move this we can recalibrate that pretty quick yes, to where it comes in and where the cost is. We just want to have the conversation. You said this is what it would look like. This is what it would actually look like. And then I'm going to show you how it benefits those troubled jobs. If you were. I just have one more question. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm trying to understand when you go from um, a, a job that's not being a supervisor to being a supervisor, the way I understood it, it is, isn't consistent currently is that correct that it's not that you move one grade in two steps there's it's sort of individual right so 
in this plan, what would it be if you went from being in in like HHS from being a social worker to the supervisor? What kind of increase are you suggesting? So again, we're not there yet on the increase, but those have to be determined by the pay equity point. So let's just say a social worker came in at 200. The mm -hmm. supervisor might come in at 400. That might, I'm just going to say might, so don't I'm just trying to get an average yeah. idea of this. It's Generally, we want to see at least a couple, like I would say three to four grades between there. You have such a large nice spread that you could probably have three where some couldn't. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to have, though, is if I'm starting here on step 10 and my direct reports are one above me, they're making about 11 bucks more than I'm making and I'm having to supervise them. No, thanks. Like, I don't want, I will just stay in my role. So we want to correct some of those issues. And if you're having Health and Human Services come over, you have a large organizational chart mm -hmm. that you have to weave in there because they're not going to, if they, if they see this, they're going to say, nope, we're staying out on our own paper. You guys have a big mess. Mm -hmm. We want to create something that they can weave in and it won't cause issues for them. <laughs> Um, and is there a suggestion you would have for how much of an increase a supervisor has to make that attractive to them? Yeah, so part of it is, is you can place them on points. So let's just right. say a social worker came in at a nine and the social worker supervisor came out at a 12. If at the end of the day, you still had social workers here at 41, you may say that you want to make sure whatever they're making, it would be a, a policy that would say they get at least 10% with that. So it kind of gives them an incentive, plus they have room to grow. Mm -hmm. Some will say if you're moving from social worker to supervisor, you stay on that step. Again, those are policy. I understand that. I was just asking for some guidance on how much of an increase you think it takes to get people to want to be a supervisor. Yeah, I would say I would say it has to be a couple of grades, but then it also has to look at what I'm currently making. Right. I'm going to want a percent of that. I don't want to say, oh, you're making 37, you know, 75. We're going to pop you in at step one uh -huh. and you get one penny an hour more. No, no, no. You, I, I heard yeah. that you thought 10 percent would be uh, motivating and yeah, and I'd 2 percent probably not. And it yeah. depends on the individual. But I was just trying to get a ballpark. Their tenure and all of that. Yes, That's why yes. you do, like you want to have policies that you guys can guide. Yes. That the board gives direction, but it still has to be hopefully a conversation so <laughs> that you are looking at those. So I'm going to say one more thing and then I'll be quiet. So no, my goal is good. You're probably and my goal is to be wanting to be fair to pay people well, but to recognize that we have a limited budget that we're working with. And so to agree to something, I have to know what it actually costs and not just that it's fair. Yep. Yeah. Nope. And that's where if you can help me on this to say we're comfortable with the number of grades, we can even start putting in all the positions. What would that Mm -hmm. Where does that put every position? I only did a handful of positions because those are the ones we keep talking about. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to show what this could do to those. Now, to your point, we want to make sure we're not then overpaying, you know, some position by 40 percent or whatever, because it was slotted there. That's why we're reevaluating those positions, too, to make sure if we move it, we're moving everyone fairly unfortunately, some employees may be paid right where they should be, mm -hmm. and they're not going to get the big bump. But those that aren't, those are the ones you want to make sure. The question I have is we're still limited to a 40 hour week. So even at as the wages keep getting higher and higher, people can work two hours of overtime and make more than their supervisor. For sure. Yeah. So is there a way to incentivize or add an incentive to the supervisors, you know, like they get extra pay over 45 hours or there's you know, I know we've been talking with other businesses there in Wanamingo and and they get uh, get straight pay after 45 hours. He doesn't get any overtime, but so once he gets his 45 hours in a week, he's still getting additional money just to keep that compression issue taken care of. Is that crazy? Yeah. Is that uh, a little bit? Yeah, you generally probably wouldn't want to do that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'd be better just to pay competitively. Okay. Um, you, you board probably doesn't realize, but we have some department has to put in 60, 70 hours a week. Sure. sure. And you'd literally, I mean, that would be a large increase to their wages. 
Um, but I think it's, you know, we've talked before about the example in, in public health where, uh, you know, uh, the supervisor chose to take a demotion. Mm -hmm. And if that person works one hour of overtime, uh, a, a pay period, they'll make more than they do right. as a supervisor. Um, and we've had that position posted and externally and, and internally. And so far we have zero applications. The overtime situation you're going to fight with forever. Yeah, it's not legit to say that somebody's supervising and you, the sheriff's department runs into it all the time if somebody's going to work how many hours. And that's their choice. It's still based on a 40 hour pay period. So yeah. if you want to work 60 hours, you just took 20 hours out of your life uh, to work okay. and you make more money, you feel better about it. That's fine. If your supervisor is going to work 40, 45, he's still got 20 hours to go get a second job to get more money if he wants or do what he wants. So you're going to forever have that debate. I don't, you're not going to. Well, well, and hopefully if you have all your positions so. filled, you have less over time. Right. I mean, part of this, why do you have, I mean, you cannot control the weather. When I worked in public works, my guys made more than me all the time on a snow plow. Yep. I can't control that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then the next year, I mean. But they were out plowing at five in the morning. Exactly. And you were still sleeping, doing what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I was working. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to clarify, though, I think our department heads, when they do put the 55 to 70 hour work weeks in, and it's not every week, they're doing it to do their job. They're not right. choosing to yeah. that they want to take 25 hours away from their family. No, I had a, just they're a couple questions. To work. So to do this, to 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 go to 23 grades versus what we got, yep. what you're doing is you're you're making the spread or the point spread for each each position or each grade level. Narrower. You're narrowing the, the point spread. So what you're saying is a spread between here. So like I'm just going to say you had one we got rid of the 80.5 80 and it was really chomped in between the two. So we got rid of that. So like to say if you're a grade five, what pay equity wants to know is that's 100 points to 125 points. This does allow you to kind of make that tighter so then people can move more. What you're asking though, I think is really a policy question. If we plug them in and there's still an issue like that, hopefully we can fix that by doing this. But if that that would be how do we want to reward them for their time and whatever. And that I think is another question. I think we want to just see if we can get this to fix that or at least make it incentivizing for me to want to manage people. Um, if that makes sense. There, there are other ways to incent people too. Yeah. yeah. Then the second question is, is 12 the right number of steps? Is 10 the right number of steps? Is 8 the right number of steps? Yeah, I mean, so I mean, is, there a, is there a rational reason to stick to 12 that makes sense? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say, yeah, it allows you to have a larger spread. If you can get your minimums up, it then rewards your people to stay. And once they meet, if I, this is the market, they have some room to grow, so you're going to keep them so they just don't leave again. So that can, you know, do that. I mean, some, like police, they'll have a three-step break. They'll, you know, have three steps and they're done. That's great. They get to the top, but then what? So you, you want to, I think, at least most benchmarks counties have eight to ten. So you want to at least stay there. The reason you have more is it spreads it out more and you can reward for employees that stay longer and tenure. So it, it's really, again, a pay philosophy that you value the employees. You want to be a competitive place. What you think you're great and people are going to stay here, so we'll incentivize them. And I and I totally agree with that. My, I, but I'm going to go back yeah. to if you shorten it up, people advance faster. Yeah. Right. And in today's um, employee market, is is 12 years too long is there is is the people we are hiring more interested in accelerating faster for sure and and, and that's a, it's it's not a, yeah. a concrete answer but it seems it seems like job loyalty isn't the same as it was 10 years ago or five years ago for sure but the issue i mean if you just said we're going to go let's say to six and we're going to make six, you know, the market max. 
the new employees will get there a lot quicker. You're going to make a lot of current people mad because they're just going to sit, sit, and sit. Or no, I, be, yeah. You know what I mean? That's why this kind of allows you to do both. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes it very comfortable for employees because that's what they're used to. Um, and I think that's why you say your maximums are a little bit above because it takes them a little bit longer, but you are rewarded for that. Mm -hmm. And then my, my school board's going to show because I wrestled with this back on school board where we could not get the pay up for beginning teachers because we had a very, very, very senior staff, which took all the dollars. Yet we always wanted to, they always wanted an increase, you know, in negotiations, but it really handicapped the beginning. And that, so, so I, I, I question, and I'm not saying I'm there. I question what you talked about an accelerated beginning and then it slows. Cause I, I always wanted to settle contracts for a dollar amount. Oh, sure. So that a beginning teacher got $2,000 and a senior teacher got two thousand dollars because i wanted to get them up. it didn't work i lost many many times but i lost well you're still fighting that's good. well I, and I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah <I'll, laughs> i'm like a lot less here um but I, so i i those are thoughts that go through my mind is there is there some um benefit to getting people in and and it's quite frankly i'll tell you it's yeah. the dakota county model which says we're going to get them in and we're going to we're going to evaluate the heck out of them but we want to advance them a little bit faster mm -hmm. if they're real good employees mm -hmm. whereas we're we're not there and i don't think we can get there no. in any short order but yeah. I, I do wonder about maybe the first three steps or something right. are a little more aggressive sure. and and then drop off a yeah. little bit but and i know that and it, we have a senior staff sitting in here that probably don't like me saying that but I, it is truly about about getting a workforce for our senior staff to lead them mm -hmm. it really is in the, in my mind so and the beauty of this is if you're comfortable with this once we start plugging in we can do scenarios like that instantly and you'll see the cost You'll see who it impacts. Because the other piece of it I always think is interesting when you look at the roster, like who's the biggest winner, who's not going to win? Right. Because why is that? And then it's going to be, I mean, you know, like health and human services, an employee might get, let's say, $2 an hour more. And then someone will be like, that's not fair. Well, that's because they're under market and they should get that. You may have been right here the whole time. But doing those, we can get a cost analysis pretty quickly and see if it's really causing it because the other thing is you can build this but if it doesn't really help anyone or incentivize then what's the point that's right. why to dig into the next level would be where is your tenure where are people currently how many are maxed out mm -hmm. how many can we allow to still grow while getting people in the door right. no i don't want to be a naysayer but the more <laughs> <laughs> the more lines we have you know Nobody's ever going to get paid less, correct? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just going to have more options to put them into. Otherwise, if it was, you know, if we had 10, we're going to have to raise their wages maybe more than what we would have wanted to. I mean, is that so it's, it's better to have the 23? I would say because if you had, let's say, the 23 for the detention deputy, I'm just going to go back to that when, you know, we got rid of that 80.5 because it was weird. And when we bumped it, it bumped up too. If you had grades that weren't being used or you could, you could spread their point range out, not impact pay equity because they're still being paid the same, but you have more flexibility than if you are strictly, you only have five and now you have one that's off. It's going to bump everyone above and it's going to bump everyone below. You have a little bit more flexibility with that. I mean, I've seen one county have 50 grades. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, Okay, really not like me. So, so I, I don't think I'm a naysayer. I'm still just trying to understand. No, this is, and, and I don't think he is either. He's no, 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 no. So I, I don't think it's that. But I think we as a board really have to decide how much money we have to spend. Mm 
I think, how can we have a pay philosophy without knowing how much money we have to spend? It's like going into a car dealership and loving the Mercedes, but having, you know, a, a Chevrolet. Uh, back, and I, I don't know what our numbers are, but I think we as a board have to know that. And I think part of that is us having to decide fairly soon what the ballpark is for what we're comfortable with with the levy. And then we know what we have, and then you can tell us um, what the different costs are. But then I think the other part of that is we have to know what our priorities are for next year. Is the priority going to be the pay study, or is the priority going to be some other things? And so we have to kind of know the asks so we can decide how we want to divide up the money. So I think we have to know what our budget is. I think that would be fair to an assessment of we'd probably have to look at a four and say, well, this 23 the expanded pay grades work, which in my thought process they do, and then we'll have Tessa take those numbers and bring it back to us and say, this is how it's going to affect your levy and budget. And it may be that we can't add two at the top right away or we we'll transition in slowly, but we get the two at the bottom moved off and we transition slowly into it, yeah, which is yeah. going to give us that levy. But I would think the steps we probably need to decide is, does this expanded pay grade make sense to us that we want to see how it falls in and, and impacts the budget? Mm -hmm. If we were to implement that. Simple no, questions start to do that. I think we have to know how it impacts the budget and how can we make a decision on it yeah. without knowing that. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think you're suggesting there might be a variety of ways to implement it or that we might implement part of it and okay. not other parts of it. And again, it's not that we don't want to pay people well, but we have to have a levy that the, the community really will accept. Yeah, and, I think we have a consensus of saying going to this 23 pay grades makes sense. How it's going to implement and impact the budget? That would yeah, be I want question to, that. I want to see. I want to see it expanded out. I want to understand mm -hmm. that more. Where our jobs want, fit into yeah. it. Yeah. How it's going to affect. Us. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, refresh the board's memory that the for these two <clears> groups <throat> that weren't implemented, these dollars were budgeted for a year and a half ago. So those dollars are in fund balance. Now I'm pretty sure that the number that Tess is going to provide this time will be greater than it was a year and a half ago. You mean? Um, so I was looking at that too. I, uh, we, we budgeted for implementation. Yeah, I think the implementation was like two hundred seventy-three thousand, but I think that the uh, cost of the increase at that time was like in the eight hundred thousand range. I think that's about right. I yeah. no no quote so on that though. But. Well, I looked at it. So I think the implementation was the cost of just doing it, and then the other was the cost of the set, the increases. So yeah. I think it was a 230 something implementation and then 800 and something. I'd have to uh, pull it back off. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, you know what? There's talking. only two groups that weren't implemented. So yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. So some of that was done. 87 to 91 was not implemented right. and then HHS was not implemented. So those dollars are hidden fund balance for the implementation part. Yes. OK, not, so the implementation not, not obviously next year for the implementation of the plan that we were given the previous plan, previous plan, which was different than this. But I see. Yeah. I see. This is like version. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we many, need dates, many plan. chapters to this book. All right, I have one yeah, question. You keep that one. You may get to it, but all right. On the oh, top, the steps that's in the yellow. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. So they all go up 4%. Yep. Is it possible to raise the, obviously, increase the bottom, but I mean, like year five or six, have a larger bump, oh, and sure. then towards the very, very end, have less of a bump? Yes, you can change okay. these however you want. And we talked about that, I think, last time yes. a little bit too. It doesn't, as long as you keep the wage range the same, it won't really impact these first two. It's just going to impact the numbers in between. That makes sense. Do you Thank know what you. I'm saying? Because your starting points are the same. It's just you might speed up, slow down, but you're still going to have a start and an end point. Okay. Thank you very much. We still want to make sure that that front is aggressive enough, and yep. then when they get to that midpoint, we want to give them right. something to look at. To no, we don't want to give them a reason to leave. Yeah. And right. basically. What this 1825 is, if you did cut off those first few, that's where it would start you. So that's kind of what I did. Um, but then we did some other, you know, by adding those grades. So I'm going to just go through the rest quickly and then I'm going to, I think, answer um, one of your questions about the cost. Because I think you can do, I, you, we can give you a cost analysis, then you can slow down, get into it, not to confuse you more, but we just had a city that said, we want to be in the 80, 
fifth percentile. Mm -hmm. They couldn't afford it. So this year they moved from market average to the 67th percentile. Mm -hmm. So again, it's just really weird, but it allowed them to get where they want. And then next year, they'll be right where they want to be. Everyone's, so they're doing it gradually. Yep, exactly. um, Everyone gets something. Yeah. Um, but it tells your employees your investment. You're working towards it. Right. Yes, that, that that's the goal, but you can't maybe do it in one leap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so I think part of the next steps are, for me, I, to review those 8791 job descriptions, classifications with the HHS jobs, and try to start weaving them into this grid. Yeah, because yeah, regardless of where you want one. to pay, I have to put them in the grid. And then if you say we want to be 90th percentile or we want to be 120% above average, Whatever that is, we can get there and then instantaneously um, we'll be able to have cost numbers. So our cost implementation is always different than total cost to your mm -hmm. point. Yes, implementation it. says to get people into the mm -hmm. new grid, right. that's your cost. Everything else is if you didn't listen to DDA, you still have a cost to pay people to move if they have a step or their general increase or whatever. So implementation is always on top of that because that's that first cost to get everyone slid into the grid. Mm -hmm. And usually you're one that's the most expensive because if you have someone under, they're going to get, you know, move into step one, they're going to have a bump. So that'll be that cost. But once we continue moving forward, we can change that cost really quick in a spreadsheet and you can say scott can come back and say here's the funds we have if we pay for where it's at this is what it would cost yep we have that we have extra whatever that looks like then we can just keep kind of adjusting it so you're comfortable so we don't have to decide necessarily where we're paying today it's just kind of we're in agreement to what the grid looks like now we'll slot them in we'll get cost analysis and then we can kind of say yes, this is where we want to be, this is what it will look like. And then the nice thing about it, we'll be able to see for Scott by department, you know, where those costs are so he can fund balance all of it. So I never leave you with no decisions. Um, cost analysis we can do pretty easy by plopping it in. It'll tell you kind of what all the jobs are. That might help too because we didn't want to start here because that might cause paralysis by analysis where you're like, whoa, this is too much information. We kind of started here with a couple of jobs and we had, I think, a lot of good discussion about where do we want to be? What is market competitive? What are our benchmarks? Whatever. Now you need to see the big picture up here. Yeah. So, but I think we needed to be here so that we were all in agreement. This does look good going forward. Numbers are gonna change according to where you wanna pay and where that pay philosophy is, but we know what we want the pay grid to look like. We've built it so we can weave in jobs nicely. Um, then once we get costs, yep, that's exactly, that's fair and we can afford it. Those the I would guess it's not difficult to do a 90% and a 75% so we know what that is. I would, in terms of your giving us that information. Oh, uh, yeah. That's not hard. Was, and it wouldn't yeah. be hard uh, to do what Jason suggested is maybe implement the uh, first two steps, but not the two on the end, just and be able to compare the costs of those two things. Well, if you take one, you have to add one. Do you know what I mean? So if you didn't take both, you well, unless we decided we wanted ten steps, but oh yeah, uh, but yeah. all I'm suggesting is we would like not just one cost, but we'd like a range of options. Yeah, yep, okay. and we can do that. But is that you, you, you totally got to change the grid if you change from no, no steps no. to ten, ten steps or your minimum no, maximum. I understand, get out I understand of that. that, but but well, maybe you can state what you were. Saying that just like you identified with the one city, you said that yeah. implemented and couldn't afford it all in one year. Yeah. We might need to look at the options that right, we're gonna only implement a portion of it is yeah. what we've done. So which still run the numbers on that pay grades. Mm -hmm. So 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 my question is if you talk about if we implement it, we got this grid all figured out and we implemented the 87 to 91 in July. That's 
I'm, I'm, I'm just asking because I'm the questions. I want to know when you want to. Is that determined? We have to know what it costs before we know when we want to. Well, but I need to know, like, ideally, let's just say July 1st, because that cost implementation is based on is it a whole year? Mm -hmm. Is it a half a year? Is it October 1st? Is it, do you know what I mean? So I need a starting point, even if you say, well, too much, whatever. I can't pop you in and not know because we'll literally you go get the number from July 1st to December 31st. Mm -hmm. If you said, don't say August 1st, because that makes it really messy. <laughs> but do you know what I mean? So I do need to know if if that was your intent to do anything this year. If it's all 2024, you're pushing a large segment to wait, and that's you know, you can do that, but then it does because it'll definitely compound because now if I was behind this year, I'm going to be three or 4% more behind than I was. If you have money in your budget, I would say try to do some implementation this year because it cuts that initial cost. And especially if it is budgeted for, get them into the system, even if they don't move like another step or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, if you start a whole year implementation, if I was two dollars, and I'm going to be two dollars and three to four percent more because the market's still moving, and I've just stayed. Nothing wrong with shooting for July first. We're having the numbers, yeah. and then we can. Then you can. Decide, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We aren't committing to doing it. We're committing to getting the numbers. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Non-committal group. So my question. <laughs> I know what it costs before I can. My read. question is: Plug your ears, HR. Plug your ears, Andrea. How many pay grids are we going to have July 1 if we do that? How many what? Pay grids. One. But the. You mean versions? You're talking well, about. Because, because you're only going to put 8791 on this pay grid and HHS on this pay grid. Everybody else still going to be in the old pay grid? You've got unions and negotiations yeah. and all those. Yeah, and you can't today. move everyone. But I think the big thing is those first two that you said didn't move last time. So you want to see. Right. get them moving on to the grid right um plus to what you just said you have to go through union negotiations too so the timing might not be they a lot of them the other ones all got an adjustment the last time so if you're fair let's see if we can get those two groups on it first i'll plot everyone on there if you got yeah. finds money hidden under a rock Everyone can go on but July 1st. Reasonably, the other no. ones would, earliest would be January 1. Yeah. I mean, right. they, they've already been moved on to. Budget. It's already done. Right. That's so great. When I plan for future budgets, I, we would all be on one pay scale. Yeah. When you start doing the 24 budget, yeah. we'd all be on yeah. one pay scale. Okay. Yeah. I was just, I know multiple pay scales is a pain. And I just, yeah, okay, all right, then good. Then that question's not a, that's not a problem. Not a problem. We just, we just, yeah, well, we, we just problem. push that out. No solutions. We have no problems, only solutions. <laughs> <laughs> good philosophy. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm on board to to get to this point. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm still going to bring up the idea that we've never really come to a conclusion on what our pay philosophy is. Isn't that one of the foundational places to begin? What is our pay philosophy? Or do you just plug that in after we figure out everything else? Well, I mean, we're working with the 90th percentile. We can change that. I think part of it is, though, we've said we want to be better. We might not be able to pay for that better this year. So kind of you're working backwards. Like we're here, we know we need to be here. We need to do things to get there. This number, you can change at any point. Um, All right, but we're going to at least go with the 90th percentile to have numbers. I'll put it in, in both ways. Space. I'll put the same grid where you are to the market average to the 90th percentile. So you can look at it both ways. Right. And you can basically then say to the market, here's where we are, and the other whatever. Mm -hmm. So we can put them in both ways. That will get there. And then I think we'll be able to see the cost. We'll be able to see how it benefits some of your positions. Um, 
and have that discussion because a lot can change. Because now I have to do a lot of work. I have to slot everyone in. I needed you all to say, yep, we agree to 23, get going. And now Scott's saying, I want numbers tomorrow. So I really need to get up. This afternoon's fine. <laughs> Is your pay philosophy your question? Like, we want to pay well enough to get people fired. We want to pay well enough to retain them. And we don't want them to leave, but we don't want to outpace the private sector who's paying for it all. Compared to what we can afford, I guess that's what I'm sure. So, I mean, if I was looking at it, I'd say, okay, I don't see us ever being able to um, come close to Dakota County or Olmstead County or even Rice County. However, of the other counties, I would like to see us at the top of those other counties. Sure. Balanced against, can we afford to do that? Right. Yep, exactly. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you the top of the other group, if that makes sense. And uh -huh. Well, they get the group that's more affordable. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then where does that put you? But how does that help your market? Mm -hmm. I think that'll be a big thing. Because we know, even if you looked at just the market average, you're low on some of your jobs on the minimum. Right. That's on hurting you. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we know we need to change that. We're low so, on the minimum and yeah. we're off on the when you get a promotion what people get i get yep. that right. and i think we're going to fix that so now yeah. that we have yes we can go ahead with this we'll kind of slide in and see where that recalibrates right. you and then you can say wow that you know that makes sense this is where we want to be that pay philosophy is going to be a moving discussion too because you want to pay fairly but we have a responsible budget too so right. both things are true yeah. right and then um, it's just know, a starting place. No, you can I, go I up, understand. you can go down, but it's so, a good place to start. So what happens is lots of things come before the board in addition to um, this pay study. And it's hard to make decisions about the other things before we sure. know what this is going to cost. And so I, I think to some extent, if this is the priority for doing in 2023, that's OK. But then I think we have to be cautious about making other commitments until we know what this is going to cost. Right. I Doesn't, would does that make sense? Think that's the right. I, and, I, I, I tend to agree. I, I, I also, and I just have to say it, we may not think we can afford it, but we also may not be able to not afford it. Right. But we're going to have because we, five people we can't, we five can't five operate about it. We we are a people business, and we have to have people. Mm -hmm. And and if we can't if we can't get there to have people, what's our options? Right, none, right. none. So but, I I understand exactly where you're going, Sue. Yeah. Yeah. I just say I need to know that 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 we have to figure out how we can get there because we can't operate unless we have That's staff we have to and we can't out. keep losing staff. How we and I know and I don't say pay is the only reason we lose yeah. staff. We were, we were. We have to, we have to work. This, together. I think, will be the last thing that I say. But the city of Red Wing, I believe, is counting on um, XL being uh, renewed, know, renewed for fifteen to thirty years, something like that. And they're counting on um, XL putting in a big uh, uh, investment Flipping into upwards. that. Yes, and that that will end up helping their levy. That's what. And, but I don't know if that's realistic or if that's not realistic. And I do know that not everything that Excel spends money on is taxable. Right. Yeah. So um, is that a piece of information that's going to be necessary for us to figure out how we can go forward? I don't think that's a piece that's necessary. I, they've stated at the state legislature that they're planning on moving forward with relicensing. Mm -hmm. Relicensing takes years. I see. So uh, you can't wait for that. I mean, the the amount of turnover we had last year, we cannot sustain no, that no. level. But it, it uh, so the that city appears to be counting on that. They're counting on it. I mean, we heard some other things too. Yes, they're, we did. They're also using fund balance to lower their levy. Right. Uh, this that. this board, not this current board, but the county board it historically used to do that. That got us in a lot of trouble. I understand that. And I think the reason they felt they could was because they were counting on this bump. Yeah. But uh, that the bump might not coming real soon. Yeah, I understand. I understand that. <laughs> Well, and the nice thing is, is we'll be able to now, we have good direction, mm -hmm. give you cost. And that's Scott what and his team will be able to say, this is the money we have mm -hmm. already. What is that difference? So you'll know, like, this year, if you can afford what you can afford, what it will be 2024, and what money we have, and what, you know, difference right. that could be. So, and what the levy would have to be to yep. support that. And 
I would say I have no um, thought that that pay scale, once you put it in place, that one to 23 with the steps isn't going to progressively move up. I mean, there's nothing that says that that's going to last for 12 years. No, it's not. not. It's going to last for three. Yeah, I understand that. And I think the process we've kind of put in place to constantly be evaluating is probably the best process there is. Yeah. All right. So green, we do a consensus with the grid to move forward. Okay. Yes, and find out what the numbers are. Yes, to find out what the numbers are. Perfect. That's what I needed. Yeah. And then I'll have status numbers this afternoon. I was going to say but this afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Tessa. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Back in the